So by now you, you have realized that there's a debate going on between Linux and circular accelerators, and now we will hear a presentation from a proponent of the other side of the cyclotron-based design. And Pierre Mandrillon will talk about cyclotrons for ADS. Please, Pierre. Thank you, Mike. So, are you listen to me? Okay. First of all, I would like to thank Jean-Pierre Revol and the organizer of this conference for giving me the opportunity to speak about cyclotrons. Okay, up to now, uh, from the Alex talk, uh, we had a good deal of, uh, of, of statement in favor of Linux, and now uh, I think you have to listen to another music, I would say, and then <laughs> I will focus myself, of course, on Cyclotron. So, um, then a quick overview of, of, uh, of my talk. Of course, uh, I will uh, make a short review of the PSR outstanding Cyclotron story, where the intensity was uh, raised third times from the beginning up to now. And then I will take two examples of high-power cyclotron drivers, and uh, I will focus myself on a new single-stage cyclotron design for our company, which is quite different from the machine which has been built up to now, and I will try to draw some conclusion. Okay, what I was listening up to now is remind me of something which we saw in the 70s, where there was this famous race for the Mason factory, uh, and then on this dramatic scene, which was uh, drawn by uh, Ernst Michaelis, which was my first boss, is at CERN in the synchrocyclotron division. So uh, you saw in that picture that, of course, the Los Alamos machine was the champion, arriving in 72, but there were two important challengers. The first one was Triumph, there was news. Cyclotron, large cyclotron, separated sector cyclotron. Uh, the first was a single stage machine with uh, using a stripping extraction of H minus uh, in Vancouver. This is a Triumph machine. And uh, a machine which was coming in 74, it's a PSI. It was named SIN at this time. And this PSI machine, uh, we will review uh, the, shortly uh, this uh, wonderful story. So, um, this is the PSI in 73, just uh, uh, a few months before the, the, the first beam was, was, was made. Uh, the, the leading scientist was uh, Hans, Hans Villax, uh, who proposed first this kind of design for the separate sector cyclotron. He's in the core of, uh, of this picture. I, I don't know, this pointer is not working, I don't know why. Okay, ah, there. You see uh, the leading team with Werner Yo and most of the people. I don't would like to see all of them, all, all these old friends. And then the first beam, uh, the design was presented for the first time by Hans Villax in 66. And the first beam came in February 74 with 0.1 milliamps. And at this time, the cyclotron community was really doubtful on the possibility to accelerate 100 microamps within a cyclotron. But this was successfully. Uh, carried out by uh, the, the injector, the 72 MeV made by Philips. It was very difficult for them to achieve this goal. And this injector injected in the first, in the very big ring cyclotron. Then, uh, 10 years later, uh, in order to increase the intensity of that beam, a new injector was proposed, a separated sector machine with 800 kV injected beam from a, from a, from a high voltage platform. And with this machine, the intensity was raised not far from one milliamp, still keeping the same, the same machine for the, the booster ring cyclotron. And uh, now, for H plus I extraction efficiency, uh, this formula, this simple formula, gives a turn separation, uh, which is inversely proportional to the number of turns. So in order to increase the beam power, it was necessary to change the four the four old cavities of the ring cyclotron, which was made of aluminum, with these big new uh, copper cavities. And then uh, this is a comparison on the losses between the, uh, the red is a measurements, and uh, the, the dark is a measurements, and the, and the red point is a, is a simulation from the Opal code. And you see this is, a, <coughs> of course, a logarithmic scale, and we see that the losses are very small, a few percent. Nevertheless, it's a problem. It's still a problem for high beam power. So, uh, 
What are the main difficulties to go further in the, uh, towards higher intensity? Of course, the geometry is fixed at PSI. It's 72 MeV injector followed by a ring cyclotron. The energy gain between the machine is fixed, therefore, by simply by the geometry of the magnet. So, uh, <coughs> and then another point is the number of, element, of elements of subsystem, in particular, everything which is electrostatic, a number of electrostatic elements for injection and extraction in both uh, ring cyclotrons. And I read that uh, <coughs> the most important downtime is coming, it's about 29%, Michael knows this better than I know, uh, is due to the problem of this electrostatics problem. So, now where are we coming from? Our experience. Uh, is on two projects, which was uh, under the leadership of Carlo Rubia. Uh, the first was the energy amplifier here at CERN, and the second one was the trade projects with Enea. So, uh, you already heard a lot about this famous report, it's 95, 40, 44 report, and the conceptual design of fast neutron operator energy amplifier, which was driven first, I was in charge of the accelerator at the beginning of that, and it was the design of a 1 GV machine, <coughs> producing a 12.5 milliamps in order to get 1.5 uh, giga, gigawatt thermal. So, uh, <coughs> this uh, cyclotron cascade was made of three stages, uh, inject two injectors, uh, one H plus, one H minus inject, and I combined those two beams, I superpose those two beams in order to uh, reduce the space charge forces, at injection along the low energy energy channel up to the center of this uh, second stage, which is a separate sector cyclotron, 120 MeV, four sectors, uh, two delta cavities, and one flat top cavity here, injecting into a large ring made of 12 sectors with six large monogap cavities and two flat topping cavities. So it was a quite complex design, I would say. The second experience come from the Enea trade experiment. The Enea was uh, to drive a cyclotron to drive uh, a trigger reactor which was uh, made subcritical just uh, in order to make an experimental program, to develop an experimental program. So for that we proposed, our company was in charge of the cyclotron design, and we proposed that machine based on H2+, which should provide 250 MeV, which give by stripping, we double the, the intensity and we reduce by a factor two, by the, we reduce the, moment, the momentum by a factor two, we produce 120 MeV proton beam with three milliamps. Injection was carried out by uh, <coughs> a 60 kilovolt injection packed platform using a, an ion source developed by our company, which produced 50 milliamps per square centimeters, plus uh, a conventional, oh, sorry, a conventional uh, LIBET, low energy beam transport, to separate H2 plus from the H plus, and then finally uh, a spiral inflector to deviate the particle in the median plane. So a few, a few parameters of this machine. Okay, maximum energy for H2 plus 240, and for protons by stripping 125, 120. Maximum intensity, I said this is 3 milliamps proton out of the machine. Um, external diameter was 4.4 meter. Due to the high magnetic rigidity of that, a superconducting coil was necessary. And then, <coughs> but the, the current density in the superconducting coil was only 44 amps per square millimeter. Uh, the radio frequency chosen was 70.4 megacycle. And this is uh, uh, the reason for that. Uh, is simply one fifth of the 352 megacycle uh, RF frequency of the of the Enrico Caveri superconducting cavity, because there was an idea proposed by Carlo is to extract the beam and to continue to boost the beam with an hybrid solution using superconducting sound cavity. So uh, there was uh, in this cyclotron there was a peak voltage increasing in the, from the center, 70 kilovolt up to 200 kilovolt as the extraction. So, uh, some new advanced cyclotron design for ADS. Uh, an interesting one come recently from Texas A&M with a <coughs> 800 MeV superconducting cyclotron, strong focusing cyclotron. Everything is superconducting. 
the, the, the coil uh, for the magnet excitation, and there have cavities. But in fact, it is a two-stage cyclotron with two sources, uh, three sources, in fact, feeding a, a stack of three parallel cyclotrons, and uh, uh, they use 12 flex-coupled stack of dipole magnet in the final stage, and 10 superconducting lamb lambda quarter cavities providing uh, a 20 MeV energy gain per, two, per turn. Why such a large energy gain per turn? This was necessary to install between the turns. You see the turn separation is rather, rather wide in that. To install strong focusing channel made of superconducting Panofsky quadrupole uh, with a very high gradient of 6 tesla per meter. And the result of that is a very strong focusing in the vertical plane. You see the pass is there, and this value of nu z and nu r are quite in, unusual for cyclotron. This is the quadrupole, and this is the stack, and this is of a dipole magnet, and this is shown on this picture, the lambda quarter superconducting cavity. So in this machine, everything is superconducting. So the other example, but I will not, I will not go further with this, uh, with this uh, example, because the last talk of this, uh, of this uh, session will be given by Roger Barlow, which will present in detail the data use machine for, for, uh, <coughs> for neutrino production, three cyclotrons. Well, how it is? The cyclotron are two stages cyclotron. This is the injector one, and they extract, by conventional extraction channel, they extract the H2 plus. And then they inject into a very large machine, which is made of eight or even six sectors now in the last design. And extraction is made by stripping. But the drawback of this, of this is certainly the very long, very long, uh, well, is it? As you see, the very long internal loop of the proton stripping. Of course, all the bends are in the same direction, so they are analyzed and giving quite a, a very large uh, spread of radial spread of the beam. So, therefore, I will focus myself on the new innovative conceptual design for a cost effective, compact, and reliable ADS driver. The concept is the reverse valet bay field separate sector cyclotron, and we have a patent on that. Okay, how it works? Uh, on the left, you see the, the very simple closed orbit. Uh, achieving isochronism in a cyclotron while keeping vertical focusing at high energy is challenging. Isochronism implies a large positive radial gradient of the average magnetic field, which results in strong vertical defocusing. And how to overcome this uh, by edge focusing, this angle between valley and the sectors, and <coughs> by spiral. You see uh, the PSI machine has very strong spiral sectors. How to avoid these spiral sectors in order to make simple straight uh, sectors in order to install double gap cavity, for instance. But you have no choice. You have to increase uh, the flutter factor. That means to increase this angle beta there. And in that case, we have to inverse the field within the valley. And you show the simple geometric construction of the orbit there where the center of curvature is jumping from the internal to the external. Internal inside the sectors, and external, it's in the valley. But something which is very interesting, there are many interesting properties of this kind of design. Something which is very interesting is the extraction. You see the extraction in the valley, when you accelerate, for instance, H2+, plus, the center of curvature is already outside the machine. And extraction is very simple, because you your center of curvature is jumping from this place to this place. So you can extract the beam simply within the valley. But this is not the main advantage of that. How you produce this reverse field? <coughs> By such, such a coil with this, uh, this, uh, this shape, this is uh, the, the sectors, and this is the valley, etc., etc. The field is positive within the sector, negative within the valley. But there is a major, very important advantage of this kind of design. All the contributions of the coils are giving a positive field in the central region. And this is very interesting. Why? Because like this, you avoid an injector. You don't need anymore another cyclotron to inject in this machine. So you can install in this machine 
three injection line, for instance, with three ion source and three uh, deflector, vertical deflected beam. So uh, an injector, uh, an injector cyclotron is not needed anymore, and all these simulations are converging. I think we find a 40 degrees of a total phase acceptance accelerating the three beams. This is a major advantage of this kind of accelerator. <coughs> so, uh, of course, uh, the center region is uh, quite crowded with the three ion source on three injection line. Uh, you see the this mechanical detail of that. Everything, every source is at 60 kilovolt uh, injection line. And then there are three spiral infectors which are located here. You see them here, one, two, three, in front of three accelerating cavities. So uh, electric field is uh, quite reasonable. Um, how is the magnetic field layout for a 1.6 GV machine giving by stripping 800 MeV protons? This is a ray right? It's made of six straight hill sectors there and two small sectors in the valley, just in order to, to have the, the right geometry of the field. So you see uh, uh, the uh, last stable orbit, and you see the working path with uh, the stability, the stability which is given. Going through all the resonances give a, a full satisfactory beam at the end of the extraction. So um, <coughs> RF is providing the energy gain per tour, Per turn, all the valleys are full of RF. We have six, six sectors and six cavities within the valley, um, giving 12 acceleration gap per turn. The pump, and this is a vertical cross section through uh, these cavities, and uh, the profile of the accelerating voltage is growing from 150 kilovolt in the center up to up to 450 kilovolt at extraction with a high quality factor which make for all the, three, uh, all the six cavities a total power loss of three megawatts. So uh, the extraction now, I'm coming back to the problem with the extraction. With uh, the classical concept, we simulate the stripper in the positive field valley. You see the very long track to extract the beam. You will see in the data list, for instance, projects like this. And uh, moreover, the vertical property of the beam along, along the track is not very well, not very well focused in the vertical problem, quite wide in the horizontal plane. With a new concept where we extract the valley with a reverse field, the path is much, much, uh, much shorter, and then the optic is, uh, is quite very satisfactory. We focus the beam like that. So um, now this is a full simulation of a beam up to 1.6 GV, giving 800 MeV protons. You see uh, the full extraction is satis satisfactory. We have been obliged to, uh, to slightly increase the accelerator voltage to go through this region. This is the vertical motion, and this is the extracted beam. Well, uh, another advantage of this machine, why we, don't, uh, we could also accelerate protons, simply protons instead of H2+. Plus. And there is a big advantage coming from this reverse field valley. We don't need any material through the median plane at the extraction. We don't need any more septa. We just need a bump. And making a bump, we could make it with something which is very reliable. The most reliable things is not active things. It's simply iron bar. So we have designed a channel with iron bar like this, and we have exact protons with this process. So you see the, the turn separation uh, on, the, on, the, on the valley axis was more than almost 1.6 centimeters, 1.4, uh, 1.5 centimeters, and within the sector axis is slightly increased, is more than two centimeters. This is the three la, la, last turn in the machines. So I am coming now to the conclusion. A single stage 800 MeV reverse valley field cyclotron is a good candidate for an industrial demonstration. Why? So, let's come through the advantages and uh, comparing the advantages with uh, the requirement given by Jean-Pierre Revol at the beginning of this session. So, a single stage accelerator, it's a low construction budget and a low operational cost. We have only one machine to operate, to build and to operate. There are, of course, less components than traditional solutions 
result in a higher reliability. We don't have any transport, beam transport with an injector on the booster, uh, and though there, there is no matching issue between the different stages. Of course, the machine is much more compact. This results in a lower cost for the building. And last but not least, the store energy in the superconducting coil. If, uh, if I compare with a, a booster, uh, with a booster solution, uh, with positive field, is three times less, we make the calculation, than in the classical uh, uh, conventional booster solution. The second point is quite important because, as you saw, we can run three sources simultaneously on three injection lines. So that makes redundancy possible. And, and uh, of course, reliability is much more important. But the last point is also very important because you have flexibility in intensity. I have taken two examples. In order to get 8 milliamps protons by an H2 plus machine, you have to provide 4 milliamps of H2 plus. We can run two ion source, giving 2 milliamps beams, and simply, simply having the third source in standby, or using this source just for modulation of the intensity of the final beam. If you would like to run that higher power, for instance, 12 milliamps, that means three beams using the three source, giving three beams of two milliamps. This means six milliamps H2+. Plus. So, and last but not least, the extraction system is greatly simplified because no septa is required, and this is really a weak point in cyclotron. Alex uh, was mentioned this. The problem of beam losses in the extraction system is highly reduced. That means reliability is highly increased. So you have less activation within the machine and easier maintenance. For an industrial machine, this is uh, <coughs> really important. This is the reason why we call this machine Reverse Valley Cyclotron, Rivatron. Why Rivatron? Because Rivatron means dreaming. This is a dreaming machine for us, So uh, for ADS. So, I thank you for your attention. I'm ready for questions. <laughs> so, thank you, Pierre, for this very interesting presentation. Questions, uh, Francois? So, what determines the limit in energy? Excuse me? What, what determines the limit in energy? Uh, can it be pushed? What determines the limit in energy? I don't know if can it, and the principle be pushed forward, further? I don't understand your question. What, what determines the limit in energy? Ah, the limit. The limit yeah. Ah, the limit. Uh, up to now, we fix only 600 MeV, uh, 800 MeV, just in order to be uh, online with all the different projects there. Uh, might be we can go slightly higher, but it might be interesting to go a little bit uh, lower at 600 MeV, for instance, like Mira. Mira design is 600 MeV. In that case, it's not necessary for protons for protons to use superconducting coil. And that could make the machine either, either a lower cost and simpler machine. So, but if we have to go slightly higher in energy, up to 900 MeV, simulations show that it's still possible. So, we have time for one more question. Uh, Hamid. Pierre. Hi, <laughs> Hamid. What is the number? The magic number that you can offer me in reliability. Is this idea of this uh, number of trips that I mentioned uh, the first day, I spoke about uh, actually number of trips in three months of about 10 longer than three seconds. If you have a trip. Uh, frankly speaking, I didn't calculate that. Uh, I simply was, th this is a conceptual design study huh? we made in the company. But nevertheless, uh, our, uh, our philosophy was to reduce as much as possible the number of components, yeah. the number of fragile components. Yeah. Having three sources, that would reduce the beam trips coming from the injection. And that we can modulate the intensity of that. Uh, eliminating the septa will be a great advantage for the uh, beam trips. As I mentioned at the beginning of this talk, 29% of the downtime beam in PSI is coming from the electrostatic. So we don't have any electrostatic element in that. So uh, answering you, your question will, will require the next step of the studies, uh, much more details. Yeah. 
<coughs> okay, I, I should give um, Alex the chance to comment. Yeah, just a short comment. Uh, so first of all, uh, I, of course, acknowledge that there are a great number of very clever uh, ideas uh, where you pushed uh, certain things forward. But still, I think you didn't answer to any of my generic arguments. You are back now with a cyclotron, which is in reality three cyclotrons in one, where each has four milliamps of beam. So you have beautifully demonstrated to me what is about the intrinsic limitation, which is a few, say 10 milli, I give you even 10 milliamps. So we are far, far away from any industrial machine. Secondly, uh, this modular concept of fault tolerance, you have it just for one of the beams, but not for the individual cavity. As soon as one of your cavity falls, the trip is there. So I say to Hamid, it's three times the present trip rate of PSI, because so, it's three machines in first order. Of course, a little bit generically. So it's a factor of 500 <laughs> above the specification. So, so Sorry to formulate uh, a little bit. Sorry, Once again, I, I acknowledge very beautiful ideas with the SEPTA and so on. It's very clear, but uh, intrinsically, we are not no, speaking, at the many 10 milliamp machine. Speaking about cavities, Alex, I will answer you by a question. How many cavities you have in the Mira design, for instance? Uh, How many cavities? Yeah, it's an it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> order of magnitude, uh, let's say 100. Just to give 100 cavities, I have only six. So, uh, if, if, uh, if one cavity is switched off as a problem, we switch off the opposite cavity. You see, we have six cavities. We switch off the opposite cavity. We eliminate two cavities. We are running with four cavities. I have considered that. So, I am making more turns, but I have no symptom. No symptom. So, therefore, I don't care about the turn separation there anymore. Uh, you, you see my point? So, um, <laughs> you don't see. Okay. Um, <laughs> it's a question of philosophy, I think. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, our lunch break is now already below one hour. Okay. So, I have to shut down the discussion here at this moment. But I'm glad that we can demonstrate to the reactor community that we have a lively discussion in accelerators. Oh, yeah. And this wow. actually brings the field forward. That's very there important. There are different solutions. There are different solutions. So, thank you.